Hey everyone, welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and I am so excited to spend this Tuesday with you. Thank you so much for being here. As always, we've got Liz behind the camera there. Hi everybody. Asking questions, being uh, our best cheerleader. And we've got <laughs> our wonderful camera crew running around making sure they get all the best angles for you. So thanks to them for being here. So let's see where we've got people tuning in from. We have Cindy from Oh, I can never say this right. Cur de Lane. Cur de Lane. Is that right? Yep. I've been there. It's lovely. Absolutely lovely. I just, you know, butcher the name every time. I apologize. Uh, Becky from East Tennessee. Charlene. Lois from Canada. Thank you guys so much for being here. We appreciate you, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Um, thanks so much. So, anything, any like, you know, business we need to get out of the way, Liz? Anything important? No? I think we just want to tell people that starting today, you can see all the great yes. holiday things. Yes. So it's Christmas in July. So start, like Liz said, starting today, we're launching lots of great holiday fabrics available on our website. And I'm going to teach you a great project uh, for holiday gifting today. And we're going to bring back some of the other things that we've made that are great gift ideas as well. So super, super fun and exciting. And the project we're going to be making today is this little pin cushion. And it's got this great little strip on the side uh, to hold your binding clips um, or whatever your heart desires. Maybe you use uh, like binder clips or something for your mm -hmm. binding. Yep. Um, it, you've got that little tab there that will hold those. And it's an awesome size. The reason that I... Uh, wanted it to be a little bit larger and went for this size is it fits perfectly for me in the nook back here by my machine. It sits there and it's just like substantial enough that I don't knock it off all the time. I know you can't see it back here. Sorry, Isaac. It's back here. <laughs> um, but it, it's substantial enough that I don't knock it on the floor often and it just works really well. But I also wanted to use this opportunity while making this small project to show you how we can make many all at once. Exactly. Exactly. To kind of uh, amplify our time a little bit and, um, you know, make the most of it. And it's, it's a perfect opportunity given that we're talking about the holiday season and gifting. So let me show you how I did this. Um, we're going to show you how to make eight at a time, which is maybe you don't need eight. So just remember the numbers that I'm giving you, you can just cut those in half if you only need four or two. Or you can double them if or you need Or you can 16. double them. Exactly. <laughs> You know, make it for your whole quilt guild, whatever exactly. your heart desires. It's really simple. So to start with, um, to make eight, you're going to need eight five inch squares. And we're going to uh, pair those up light and dark. And I've got two of them here and I'm going to put them right sides together. So you can see I've got that there and let me grab a pin. And the first thing, woo, every time I use this pin, I pull it apart wrong. There we go. First thing I'm going to do is use- your own strength. I know. Right? <laughs> uh, the first thing I'm going to do is use my little two and a half by eight inch ruler here, and I'm going to draw a line down the center. Oops, if it will mark. There we go. Now it's working. And that is really just going to be a guideline, but you're going to do that with all four of your sets. You're going to draw that center line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam on either side of this line and then also a quarter inch in from both of the outside edges. So running, you know, uh, vertical all the way across this fabric. And so keep in mind, actually, let me just show you how I did this with multiple sets. I'm going to go ahead and mark this one as well because I think that's really important. If you've never done chain piecing before, this is how we're going to do it. Right. So chain piecing is just you keep chaining one after the other. So the thread exactly. keeps going between them. You don't have to stop and cut thread between yep. squares. Thank you, Liz. All right. So I've got a few of these ready. And just remember, you would do this with all four of them. And so I'm going to go ahead and I have my quarter inch seam line marked here with my diagonal seam tape. And so I've, I'm putting that line that I drew right on that quarter inch line to start and I'm just going to zoom down this side and then I'm going to feed this next set right behind it. I can actually lift the presser foot and put that 
right next to the needle. And the reason that it's handy to do this is it um, not only saves time, but it saves thread. So it's a really good thing to practice whenever you can. And I'm just gonna slide that right in behind. And I would do this with the next two sets as well. So I've made all those seams at the same time. Then we'll trim our threads. We're gonna go ahead and turn it around, do the exact same thing going the other way. Just watching to make sure that I'm staying on that quarter inch line. Your quarter inch seam is fairly important with this project. As long as you're consistent, you'll be all right. Cut my threads again, and now we're gonna go ahead and go down this side a quarter inch in. And the next one. And you can see by chaining them together, it just makes it really quick because you can just keep sewing down instead of having to reach for the next piece. And your quarter inch seam is going to be kind of like your fingerprint. It's going to be That's your own. That's exactly right. So as long as it's consistent, you're good. You don't have to measure it to be specifically accurate, exactly. precise, perfect. There we go. So we have got that done. And you can see I've basically just created two tubes um, out of my five inch squares. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these apart and I like to use my rotary cutter to make quick work of it. And on this one, I'm gonna start by measuring in between my stitch lines. So I've got a stitch line here and a stitch line here and it is exactly two inches between stitch lines for me, which means my quarter inch is right where I want it. And that's what we're shooting for. If yours is a little different, that's okay. You just wanna check it because what we're gonna do is we want to cut exactly in between those uh, seam lines. And so I'm gonna lay the one inch line of my ruler on my stitch line, and I'm gonna cut this in half like so. And then I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna cut on our drawn line Whoops, there we go. And then again, with that one inch uh, mark on the ruler lining up with my seam line and cutting that one in half. And now, by sewing that way, we've got four sets of identical rectangles. And so we're gonna take these and press them open. And can you tell us about what cute fabric you picked up? Oh this? yes, thank you, Liz. So this line is called Garden Club Favorites, and it's called, ugh, sorry. I'm just excited, let me just take a minute. It's called Garden Club Favorites by Brenda Ratliff for RJR. And I love it because not only is it bright and cheerful, but it has really small prints that work perfectly for a project like this. So you get to still see all of the cute patterns and designs that she's created um, in the project. So it is awesome for this. Thank you, Liz. Yep. And we do love the small prints for this. The big prints are going to get cut up real small. You might exactly. not be able to see them anymore. But small prints or just bright, cheery colors make this really sweet. Exactly. And so then I went ahead and since I've paired all of these up light to dark, it made it really easy to press all of my sets to the dark side. So that's what I'm doing here. Just going to roll them back, press them to the dark side. And then I'm going to repeat this, obviously, with four sets so that I'm going to have four different colorways. And you can see here, I've done that. You can see the four different colorways that I've put together and I've stacked them up so that there's four in each stack. And then what, I've, what I do is I take them just like this and I've decided this is the way that I want to sew them together. And I'm going to sit them right here next to the sewing machine and then I'm going to take this one from the top and this one from the next row. Whoops. And I'm just going to lay it right sides together. And I'm going to take my quarter inch seam. And then to continue with our chain piecing, I'm going to take this one 
and place this one on top, right sides together. And just slide that one right behind. And then you can see we would just keep going until we had the whole stack done. I can go ahead and slide these in behind and it makes really quick work of it. And then one more. So while you're stitching that last piece, I want to say we have people from literally all over the world joining. Oh, I love if we it. had someone from Antarctica, we'd have all the continents. Oh, but, I love it. Um, so thank you all for spending a little bit of your day with us. And for those of you who are just joining us, we're making this pin cushion with a clip strip yeah. for your binding clips. Just like this. So cute. And we're showing you how to make eight at once because um, we're talking about it being the gifting season. So thank you, Liz, for giving us a, a little update. So you can see here now I've got these um, in sets of four and I can cut these apart. Oops, I missed, missed a thread back here. There we go. And again, we can press. When I was doing this in my sewing room, I had all of my, um, my iron and everything. I had my little nest built, like Jenny likes to say, so that I didn't have to get up and move around a lot, and it made it so quick. And so then we're just going to press our sets of four. So Vicki, I see your question about the best filling for a pincushion. We're going to get there in just a minute, I promise. Yes, we will cover that. And then we've got this one. And again, you can see I keep them sorted um, by piles. That's just how my brain works. And that way I knew what I was reaching for every time. And so then now I've got my, my sets of four together and I can just put these right side together and do the exact same thing and just chain piece these. And then we're just gonna have four sets like this. So because we started with that really cool technique of getting a bunch of strips at once from the two charm packs yes. or two charm pieces yes. in our pack, we got this comes together super fast. So fast, exactly. And then instead of having to cut and sew all these little tiny strips together, uh, we're just sewing big seams and it works really, really well. All right. I've got those. And then I can cut those apart and press these back. And one more. And eventually, when you do that with all of your colorways, you're going to have four strip sets just like that. And I flip-flopped that one, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and so we're going to have four of these. And now, how we get to eight is we're going to measure this and cut it in half. And so we know since we started with that five inch charm square and we haven't changed the width, this still measures five inches wide. So we can still use our handy ruler and um, cut this in half long wise so that we get two pieces out of these strip sets. So there we go, two out of that one. And then what we're going to do is just simply sash it. We're going to do that with all of these if you're making eight like I've demonstrated. Then we're going to sash it with one and a quarter inch strips. And the reason that I chose that size is because when we take our seam allowance, it's going to be the exact same size that we ended up with with our magic sewing of our five inch squares here. And so it just gives us some symmetry on the project. So I use this great um, solid navy as my background color to sash this with. I thought it just made made, <laughs> maked. It just made all these great vibrant colors pop. Yeah. And so it turned out really cute. And so we just um, sashed all eight of them again, using that same chain piecing method that we've done before. And so when you've got all of these strips, let me just show you here. I've got a strip here. You can just take this strip just like this to the sewing machine and lay your pieces on and start sewing all the way down, making sure you stay straight. 
and then slide the next one in behind it. And then when you go, you can just trim these all up square, so on the other side, et cetera, et cetera. So this project is like a, a great exercise in chain piecing oh, for the win. absolutely. And it just goes together so, so quick. And so once you've got all of them sashed and ready to go, you're going to have these great um, little blocks, I guess, and they measure four by eight. That should be close to your finished measurement. And so now what we're going to do is I've taken some fusible fleece um, right here, which if you're not familiar with that, it's like a really thin batting and one side has this bumpy fusible that you can just actually press your fabric to. And so I've cut a piece of that fusible fleece to the exact same size as our block. And so I'm just going to press that together. And we have a question about can we use a honey roll? And you can definitely Absolutely. use any fabric. Yeah. Um, the method that we're showing uses the charm pack because then you get that many more cuts that much more quickly but exactly. you can absolutely use a honey roll or a jelly roll yep you could use whatever you have it's a great um, uh, scrap project as well since you really only need those eight five inch squares that's really easy to find out of your fat quarters or whatever you have lying yep. around um, so it's really really great um, to just kind of knock out that those scraps and turn it into great gifts for your friends so we, now that I have that um, pressed to the back that fusible fleece you just want to hold it so you make sure it adheres evenly across. I went ahead and just did some very simple, hopefully you guys can see this, very simple top stitching to kind of quilt it together um, with navy thread. It's not perfect. Let's not look too close, but I'm not going to die over it. Um, and I just did that all the way through just to add some texture and make sure it stays nice and stable. And so that is the top. It's ready to go. Um, like I said, it measures four by eight. So then for the backing, you're also going to cut four inch strips out of your background fabric and cut those into four by eight inch rectangles. So then we can set that aside and we're going to make the little tab, where did my finished one go? Where we can put our little um, binding clips just like here. And it's so cute and handy. So then the size that you're looking for for that is two and a half by, I believe it was six that I decided. Ooh, I've got six and a half here. What did I tell you, Liz? Was it six? I think it was six. Okay, I must have cut this wrong. So let's just fix this. It should be two and a half by six. And guys, we have a printable in the description oh, yes. as well so that you can see all the instructions. Yep, and we've got a great link in the description where you can see all the step-by-step. -step. I know I've been kind of whizzing through this so you can check out that printable as well as information about all the products that, that we're using. That'll be there for you. And so um, two and a half by six. And then we're going to take a five inch by uh, one and a quarter piece. This is that same fusible fleece that we used on the back side of the top of our pin cushion. And we are going to kind of center this up within. Make sure you can see. We're going to kind of center this up within our piece here and then make sure when I fold it over that I can cover the whole thing and that we've got the bumpy side down and then we're going to press this in place as well. I love this philosophy though of just kind of assembly line sewing. It makes it go really really qu uh, quick and um, it makes the process of making projects like this a little less daunting because they come together so nicely. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you're, you're thinking of all your friends when you're making this. Yeah, and, so it's, and then you get excited because you're like, I can't believe this is all coming together so quickly. It's super fun. Yeah, it is. And so we've pressed this to the middle. You can see I've got this a little bit on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those edges under at the iron. the other thing that's super cute about this is you can you can pick the charm squares or the scraps that remind you of your friends exactly so if someone you know is like all about bright rainbow colors you can make something with bright rainbow colors yeah if someone is all about the purple green combo yep you can hook them up with that and it's you really will versatile. be able to customize it to to your friends which is so great and so then now that we've pressed under both sides um to create that little um hem 
then we're just going to press this in half. Just like so. Now I should have, I thought, a completed one, but maybe not. All right, well, we'll stitch this, but I have white thread in my machine. And so just remember, I did have, I did use navy thread when I was making this, just so that it wasn't quite so glaring. But this way you guys can see it. Yeah, so you'd want to pick something that blends, but maybe yep. you don't. Maybe you want to pick something that contrasts. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool, too. This, actually, this strip is my favorite part of this because <laughs> um, I'm forever losing either my pins or my clips. And having them in the same place is something I'm really excited about. Yeah. So. So I just went really close to the edge and just took a seam there and I've left my needle down right in the corner and I'm just going to pivot and go straight down the side. And slow down as you're approaching that corner or you'll be like me and run right off the edge sometimes. And I did backstitch there just because I don't like for things to come out. But there you can see we just top stitched right around the edge of that. I'm actually glad we've got the white thread so then you can see it. And then this is just as simple as putting our layers together. So we've got that 4x8 background piece and we've got our tab and we're going to put it with the tab in and then we're going to use our quilted top piece and then we can just take this to the machine and I like to start actually now remember I'm gonna put a pin in here because my tab is there and I don't want it to slide or move I just kind of eyeballed it in the middle you can measure if you want but I am gonna put a pin in there to hold that in place but I think it's really important to mention when we start sewing I like to start on the side opposite the tab and I do want to leave a, about a two to two and a half inch opening so that I can fill it and turn it um, and not worry about um, popping those seams or anything like that. So I'm going to, since I know the tab is over here, I'm going to go ahead and start right about here at the machine. And so, you know, a quarter inch in all the way around, leaving that two inch opening. back stitch like I said so I've got a couple questions could you use a ribbon Deborah Meeks at Nixon is asking could you use a ribbon for the clip tab and I think you could yeah we added this little bit of extra body to the clip. yeah I put that uh, fusible fleece inside because I found it easier to attach and remove the clips when it was a, had a little bit more stability which you wouldn't necessarily have with a ribbon if you had a really wide ribbon you could still fold it in half Mm -hmm. and use that um, fusible but I personally really liked having that extra thickness in the tab but it's a great idea and it would be really cute yes. and also not to distract you but um, this is also one of those places when we were looking at the top of the pincushion lots uh -huh. of people are saying this is the perfect time to bust out those fancy stitches absolutely and some contrasting thread yes. and and just decorate it to your heart's content. I love that you guys remember that because I sew on um, a Baby Lock Jane, what is, what is now the Baby Lock Accomplish, and it's just a straight stitch machine. Um, and I love it that it's fast, but I forget that there's wonderful sewing machines out there that have fancy stitches. So I don't, it never even crosses my mind is what I'm saying. <laughs> because I'm just like, <laughs> pedal to the metal, get as much done as we can. But I love that you guys, because so many of you do have those wonderful machines with the extra stitches. So thank you so much. And as you guys make these, send us pictures. You can yes. send us pictures using the hashtag msqc show and tell uh -huh. and then they all show up together and we can see your version and how you made this your own so we love seeing that so show us show us yours yes we would love that and so i'm just pivoting on the corners and i am using i don't know if you can see this i'm sure you can my rectangle is not perfect you guys know i just don't die over this stuff i'm using my my quilted portion, my top portion as my guide. So I'm following that as my quarter inch seam and I know it's all gonna work out in the wash. So just wanted to point that out. All right, and now this is that last corner. And Patricia Thames is asking, why do you start on the side without the tab? 
Um, the reason that I start on the side without the tab is because I don't want to have to hand stitch where the tab is and I don't want to have to fill where the tab is. And so by starting on the side opposite of that, I don't have to mess with it. So now we're Perfect. just going to turn this. And you do have to kind of finagle it a little bit because you have that fusible fleece on there and it makes it a little bit more sturdy. But it turns and we've back stitched so we don't have to worry. And then now this is a great time if you have, you know, the back side of a pin or a chopstick to get in here and really push out your corners so that they look nice. If you're worried about bulk, you can trim off some of that um, before you turn it as well but I didn't really have any trouble. And then, oh, there we go. We need a drum roll. We do need a drum roll. Ta-da! So now I do like to press it a little bit, even before I go in and fill it, because this is really the only opportunity you have to do that once you start stuffing it. You can't really press it. And so that way I know everything's going to lay nice. We've got that tab centered there. It looks so great. And then I've got my little opening so I know I'm not going to have to hand stitch much, which makes it much more manageable. And honestly, if you didn't want to hand stitch that, you could very easily just fold in your little um, seam allowances there and take a little narrow top stitch. Nobody would care. It would be just fine. So let's talk a little bit about filling. Um, I personally love these crushed walnut shells um, and we do have these on our website. They come in a big bag. Um, I've already filled this one out of this, but I think you could probably get three of these per bag, three or four, but I wanted to give you a good tip. I actually like to mix a little bit of polyfill first before I put in the walnut shells. I don't I didn't grab it. Oh, there's some back here. Just a sec. So I've got this bag of polyfill and you can use just a tiny bit. Um, and I like to put it in first. And for some reason, I like the way it feels when I'm putting my pins or needles in when there's just a little bit of polyfill mixed in. Um, and so I just kind of spread a very thin amount towards the top. And that's really all I would do. And then I would come in here and I've cut just a tiny corner off of my walnut shells. You might want a, a funnel if you've got it handy because they do get a, a little bit messy, but they're easy cleanup. And then I just start pouring these in my opening just a little bit at a time. And honestly, the filling is the most time consuming part because then you just have to kind of shake and get it out of the opening and just keep going and just go until it gets full. It's really easy. And the good thing about this portion is it's something you can do while you're sitting and watching TV. And so it's a little bit rewarding after all the sewing is done. You're like, okay, now I can pop down on the couch, watch my favorite show and finish up these projects. But I just think it comes together so great and so quickly. And I love that you can make eight for your friends. So. Any questions? Yeah, so we do have a couple questions. You didn't clip the corners when you turned it. I didn't. I did mention you absolutely could if you're worried about bulk. Like I said, when I sew, I've, I learned, I mean, I've been sewing a long time, but lately, Jenny is my example, and it's just like, get it done as quick as you can. So sometimes we cut corners by not cutting corners, right? <laughs> but other times, you know, you wanna be precise, and it really will cut down on that bulk if you trim your corners. But, but if you like that little bit of rounded corner look, you may be going for that. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, there's just, I just don't think there are any quilt police, any sewing police. We can just, you know, sew to make us happy. And when we go to gift these to our friends, they're gonna be thrilled, so. And there's lots of great fillers you can use. We did show you the walnut shells today and a little bit of polyfill. Yep. Um, but there are lots of options. So if you're someone who goes for buckwheat or you're someone who goes for rice. Yep. That all works. It all works. We just like the walnut shells because it's supposed to be very good for your needles. Exactly. And pins. So I love that idea. Um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have not done chain piecing, this assembly line kind of sewing, I hope you will tackle this. And be sure to check out the fabulous printable that breaks it down um, as a reminder. Remember, you can print that off anytime. Um, this is a wonderful gift project. And as a reminder, we have some other great uh, gift items that we've covered lately on Missouri Star Live. Let me pull these over here. So we made this great, whoops, hold on. There we go made this great uh, portable checkerboard, which is super fun. It's got these storage pockets for you to hold all of your pieces. And you guys, when we did this live, you were asking for a pattern and we listened and we made you one. Yes. So it just arrived in the warehouse today. So it's not online this second, but the digital pattern is available. Yep. And if you look today or tomorrow, it should start appearing on the website that you can download the pattern for this project. Exactly. Loved it. So, so I thank you guys for asking for that. You're so sweet. And so like Liz said, the pattern for this will be available soon, like end of day. Digital pattern is up now. So you can check that out. Really, really fun. We also made these really great uh, project bags using the zippity do done zipper from June Taylor. And as you can see, I loved it so much. I made myself another one. I brought all my step outs in it today. Um, so these are really handy and really great. And we so, got a great tip from one of you guys to say, you know what, I make these and I throw in a fat quarter or yes. a pre-cut and a pattern. And exactly. So you can see we kind of put together this little gift uh, item. So it's got these great uh, wonder clips in here, a charm pack, another one of these fabulous zippers that we use to make it um, from June Taylor. And it's just such a great little gift for your quilting friend. And then lastly, we made this awesome, easy, a portable ironing board cover. And so this one is using a beautiful K floral from Free Spirit and we just love it. And it's got an easy drawstring so you can remove it and wash it as needed. And you can always make this to fit your current style. Exactly. It doesn't take a lot of fabric. It's quick and easy and another great gift to make. So we hope you guys enjoyed this. We hope you have a fabulous week. And this is just the start of many wonderful Christmassy things to come with Christmas in July. Uh, also, we'll have some very special guests next week. I'm, I will be out of the office that day. So Natalie and Jenny are filling in for me. So some very wonderful, familiar faces. You will see them. Um, thank you guys. Have a wonderful week. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.